Just this past year, the world had a turning point where more than half of humanity now lives in cities. So cities are growing, they're expanding, they're also becoming denser. Um, we're really gonna have to think about how we can design new technologies for the city in different ways. My name is Matthew Claudel. I'm a researcher at the Sensible City Lab at MIT. We now have this ubiquitous digital layer that suffuses the city. We have physical space that's the same as it always has been, the parks, the squares, and the streets, and then you have a digital layer. So everything that we do in the city has actually been transformed. And humans and our apps, our technologies, are, are really caught in between these two dimensions. What the lab explores is the hyperlinks between those, the sort of digital physical space, the collapse of bits and atoms. I'm Ingeborg Wacker and I'm an associate professor at Harvard Graduate School of Design. I'm also the head of the 3D Experience City project at Disso Systems. When I'm imagining the city of the future, I'm thinking about my daughter. She's seven years old and I imagine her to live in a city that engages much more with the citizens where citizens communicate actively with each other um, but also have a vision for the city and where they live resourceful with each other. What we see is a more rapid growth of the urban areas than we have ever seen before. So that puts tremendous challenges to designers, of course, uh, in terms of where do all these people live? What are they all eating? Where's the food coming from? How do we transport people? What are the energy resources we have for them? The 3D Experience City project will be a holistic urban model. And what I mean by this is that we're looking at all the systems that constitute the city in their totality, most importantly in their relationships to one another. Infrastructural systems such as energy, water, traffic, maybe more importantly even healthcare, education, communication, and any other system you can think of that affect human life. I'm Philippe Laffer. I'm the CEO of Katia. Katia's focus is to design and engineer every object in the world and making virtual worlds. So the model is not a computer graphics model, it's not just, a, just that, you know. Of course, it's, it's the 3D representation, but it bears inside, you know, all the material properties. It's a model with all the behaviors, all the physics. So as a citizen, you can virtually walk inside the building and understand what the temperature will be. You can make a lot of what-if scenarios. In addition to that, also we look very carefully at the repercussions the urban systems have on the resources uh, worldwide. And this is of course a pretty large project. We will work many years on it properly. But if we want to have a resourceful lifestyle within the urban settlements, we of course need to understand what the repercussions are for the entire planet. A project we did called Trash Track was taking geolocating tags, these digital trackers, and attaching them to ordinary pieces of garbage and just watched where they would go. Here you can see after two days, the tags are moving all over the Seattle region. After seven days, they're still moving. They're beginning to cross outside of the state. After two weeks, it's already in Florida. You see a piece going to Chicago and back to Baja, California. And even after two months or three months, the trash still hasn't found a place to rest. So if you plot this over the entire country, you can see these sorts of patterns and reveal a network that we really knew nothing about before. There are two responses to a project like Trash Track. One of them is the engineer's response, to take the data, look at the system as it exists, and design a new way for it to work, to optimize the system. The other response is more of a people-centric one, a more bottom-up response. And through creating the data and visualizing it, we can actually hope to promote behavioral change. So you show people uh, where their plastic bottles are going after they throw them away, and maybe the next time they're reaching for the trash can, they'll think about where that bottle is going. So this holistic model can be used by various players. For example, the city manager or the developer in the city can use this in order to play their different visions through and simulate, based on real data, what the repercussions would be of these type of planning. Very important as well is uh, the overall experience that the individuals will have. So what is the experience of the citizen? Through the visualization, which I think is a key aspect, data that is usually only abstract to us becomes really tangible. I think this project overall tries really to raise the level of consciousness we have as people living in an environment and being an extension of the environment.
So when we think about the future city, it's not going to look too different, in my opinion. We still need flat spaces to walk on, we need tables, we need places to sleep, we need places to sit. But what's going to change is the way that we use our cities. Now that we have this digital layer, now that we can understand the city in new ways, we can transform the systems that we already have. So this might have implications for energy, it might have implications for food. Across the whole spectrum of urban challenges, we can begin to, to sense, to actuate, and to transform our urban space.